Hello everyone, welcome back to Learn with Med Nuggets. In this video, we are going to learn about rickets. Let's start with what is rickets. Rickets is a disease of the growing bones that occurs in children and adolescents due to failure of mineralization of the bone matrix at the growth plate before fusion of the epiphysis. The etiology of rickets can be divided into two categories, nutritional rickets and refractory rickets. Nutritional rickets can be due to a deficiency in vitamin D that can occur due to a congenital deficiency, malabsorption if the baby is having diseases like coliac disease or cystic fibrosis, then vitamin D will not be properly absorbed, so malabsorption can be a cause. Inadequate dietary intake, even though breast milk is the gold standard of nutrition for children aged less than one year, breast milk is not an adequate source of vitamin D, so fortified baby food or formula should be given. If they have a liver or a kidney disease, it will affect the hydroxylation of vitamin D. Other causes of lack of vitamin D can be due to dark skin, decreased exposure to sunlight, certain drugs like anticonvulsants that increase the metabolism of 25 hydroxy vitamin D. Other causes of nutrition and records are calcium deficiency and phosphate deficiency. So those are the etiology for nutritional records. For refractory records, it can be due to uh, vitamin D dependent records, which is type 1 and type 2, hypophosphatemic records, chronic kidney disease, renal tubular acidosis, and certain tumors. But the most common cause of records generally is a nutritional deficiency of vitamin D. Now let's look into the clinical features of records. The general features include an increased risk of fractures, failure to thrive, increased risk of respiratory infections, and a protruded abdomen. The skull features include cranial tapes, or you can call this the ping-pong ball sign. This is due to softening of the cranial bones. Delayed frontal kosher, so there will be a large anterior frontal, and an enlarged skull that is due to frontal and parietal bossing. The chest features include a ratchetic rosary due to enlarged costochondral junctions, a Harrison sulcus due to pulling of the soft ribs by the diaphragm. Limb features include genuarum and genuvalgum deformities, wrist widening because the growth plate cartilage and osteoid expand without mineralization of the bone matrix, so the bone width increases at the growth plate. Bowing of the tibia and double malleoli will also be seen. Also, there will be features of hypercalcemia because uh, calcium will not be properly absorbed because of a deficiency in vitamin D. So there will be features of hypercalcemia like tetany, chopstick sign, trosius sign, strider and scissors. Now let's look into what abnormalities are seen in rickets. So there will be a low or normal serum calcium and phosphate levels depending on the cause and an increased alkaline phosphate levels and a low 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 levels and high parathyroid hormone levels will be seen. X-ray features include osteopenia, metaphysial cupping and fraying due to blurring of the metaphysial margin and also because of the soft bones and you will also see widening of the growth plate and you call this splaying. The treatment of rickets is with vitamin D and calcium supplementation. Neonates should be given around 2,000 international units of vitamin D with 500 mg of calcium per day for 3 months. And this will be followed by maintenance doses. And 1 to 18 year olds should be given 3,000 to 6,000 international units of vitamin D with 600 to 800 mg of calcium per day. The signs of improvement of this condition rickets are normalization of the serum calcium, serum phosphate and alkaline phosphate levels. The correction of the x-ray appearance takes around 6 weeks. So now, since we already know an overview of what rickets is and what are the causes and what are the investigation abnormalities, let's look into the detail on the causes of refractory rickets. Let's start with vitamin D dependent rickets. Vitamin D dependent rickets is an autosomal recessive condition and it can be divided into type 1 and type 2. 
type 1 is due to a deficiency of alpha-1 hydroxylase that converts the inactive form of vitamin D to its active form. So in the investigations, there will be normal levels of the inactive form of vitamin D, but there will be low levels of the active form. The treatment of type 1 vitamin D-dependent records is with calcitriol, calcium and phosphate if needed. Now let's move on to type 2 vitamin D-dependent records. Type 2 vitamin D-dependent records is due to an N-organ resistance to the active form of vitamin D. So when vitamin D binds to its receptors, it will not be able to produce its function. So these babies usually present early with features of rickets. And they also have a high chance of alopecia and ectodermal defects as well. In vitamin D-dependent rickets type 2, the increase in parathyroid hormone, it is a secondary hyperparathyroidism because there is an elevated vitamin D3 level, but calcium levels are low due to a secondary cause, which is endorgan resistance. So the treatment of vitamin D-dependent rickets type 2 is with high doses of calcium for a prolonged period of time. And another cause of refractory rickets that I mentioned before in the etiology was hypophosphatemic rickets. So hypophosphatemic rickets is an X-linked dominant condition where there is a defect in the renal phosphate transport. In the investigation, the serum calcium levels will be normal or mildly decreased and serum phosphate levels will be low but urine phosphate levels will be high. Alkaline phosphate will be increased but parathyroid hormone levels are normal because serum calcium levels are mostly normal only mildly decreased and the active form of vitamin D is inappropriately low for the serum phosphate. Treatment of hypophosphatemic rickets is with high doses of phosphate and vitamin D3 which is calcitriol. So now let's look at how to find the cause of refractory rickets. First, we have to check the serum phosphate level. If the serum phosphate level is high, this is most likely due to a chronic kidney disease because the kidney cannot excrete the phosphate. So your serum phosphate levels will be high. If the serum phosphate level is low or normal, we go on to check the pH of the blood. If the pH is low, this is due to a renal tubular acidosis. If the pH is high, then we check the parathyroid hormone levels and the serum calcium levels. If parathyroid hormone levels are high, but calcium levels are low or normal, then this is due to a vitamin D dependent rickets. If there are normal levels of parathyroid hormone and calcium, then this is due to a hypophosphatemic rickets. Finally, to make it easier for you to remember the changes in lab findings in different types of rickets, you can follow this table. So that is it for our video on rickets. Hope you learned something and if you did, please like, comment and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.